The basic idea behind this example is to query a table of films based on the value of the runtime column. I've already written a basic system that will allow me to do that, and I'll pop a link in the video description so that you can download these same two files. The basic idea is if I type in a number into cell B3 and click the Get Results button, I end up with a list of all the films whose runtime is greater than or equal to the number I've typed in. If I go back to the menu sheet and type in a slightly bigger number and click Get Results again, I get fewer films. The problem is, if I type in a number that's too big for the range of data I'm working with, when I click Get Results, I end up with a worksheet that only contains the column headers, and that's a little bit pointless. So I'd like to change my system so that it checks, before creating the worksheet, how many rows the record set contains. Just to show you the basic code that I've already written, and just to explain it, I've added a few comments to try to make sense of it, so it doesn't do anything particularly complicated. There's a quick check to make sure we've filled in a valid value into cell B3, and then the standard code, sort of boilerplate type code, to create a connection to that movies workbook. The movies workbook doesn't need to be open, of course. You'll know that if you've watched any of the previous videos on ActiveX data objects. And if you haven't, then you might want to start with this one that explains the basics of getting data from a closed Excel file. Back to the code, I've then opened up um, my record set. I've populated it using a simple select statement with a basic WHERE clause reading the value of cell B3 to determine the minimum runtime that I'm returning. Then I create the new worksheet, uh, fill in the column headers, copy the data from the record set, and then do a bit of basic formatting to make sure all the columns are the correct width. I've just also added a basic helper subroutine here as well so that we can quickly and easily clear up all the extra worksheets by clicking that button just to delete them all. Before I start modifying the code, I'm going to set the minimum runtime back to a number which I know returns at least some results, and click the Get Results button to see how many we get. So there are six rows returned by that value, 220. I'm going to head back to the Visual Basic Editor then, and what I'd like to do is, in between opening the record set and then creating the worksheet, I'd like to check how many results have been returned. Just to help with this for testing purposes, I'm just going to temporarily comment out all the code to do with creating the worksheet and writing values into it. What I'd then like to try to do is debug.print the value of the record count property of the record set. So I'm going to say debug.print rs.recordCount. If I just make sure I can see the immediate window, what I'd expect to see when I run this query or run this code is that I see the number six. But when you first do this, the number that's returned is perhaps a little unexpected. Apparently I've returned minus one records from the record count property. If we want to know a bit more about why this happens, we can take a look on the record count property help page on the Microsoft Docs website. And if we scroll down that page a little bit, there's a short paragraph which describes why the record count property sometimes returns minus one. And it's all to do with the type of cursor that the record set uses. The default cursor type for an ADO record set is a forward-only cursor, it's the fastest, most efficient one to use, but it always returns minus one for the record count. So if we want the true record count, we need to use a different cursor type, and we have a few different choices. We can use a static cursor, a key set cursor, and if we change another property of the record set, a dynamic cursor as well. If you want to know more about cursor types, there's a cursor type property help page, and perhaps even more usefully, a cursor type enum help page, which describes what each type of cursor does and how it behaves. The next fastest cursor type to use is a static cursor, and that one does allow you to retrieve the correct record count. So we're going to change our cursor type to a static cursor to get the record count property working. Let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor. It's important that we change the cursor type before we open the record set. The, uh, the, the cursor type property becomes read only once the record set is open. So before we open it, we can say rs.cursor type equals, and then use the ad open static cursor type. So having done that, if I run the subroutine again, this time we return the correct number of records, six. So now that we can successfully retrieve the record count, we can use that to determine what to do when no records have been returned. So I'm just going to change my debug.print statement to an if statement and say if rs.recordCount equals zero, then. I think we should have a message box just to tell the user what's happened. Uh, let's use something like there are no films with a runtime of at least 
and then we'll just concatenate the value of cell B3. I'm just going to copy and paste that just to cheat there. So let's do that. Then we want to make sure that we exit the subroutine before we get the chance to add the new worksheet. So we can say exit sub, end if, and then I can uncomment all the code that I commented out earlier on. Let's just uh, bring that back. And then if we switch back to the menu sheet and we have the number 999 typed in, if I click get results, it tells me there are no films of the runtime of at least 999. So I can click OK. I'm just going to clear my extra worksheet there as well. If I type in a smaller number, let's go for 150, click Get Results. It does return a new worksheet and populates that with the matching rows from the film table. So there we go. That's how you use the record count property to determine how many rows your record set returns. Hope you found that one useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.